Are you dealing with SIBO? If yes, you're probably going to be interested in this video because some brand new research was just released two weeks ago and it may impact SIBO treatment going forward, especially depending on which type of SIBO you have. What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut, the online guide and community dedicated to make top-notch SIBO information accessible and affordable to everyone. In this this video, we're going to one, start with a brief overview of what SIBO is, two, briefly discuss the current treatment options, three, is introduce and discuss this brand new research study intended to improve both hydrogen SIBO and methane SIBO, also known as intestinal methanogen overgrowth protocols. And then lastly, number four, I'm going to give my final thoughts and takeaways on this study. And real quick before we start, if you got value from this video, please click the like and subscribe button down below for more videos like this one. Let's get started. What is SIBO? If you don't know what SIBO is, I'm not super surprised because it's not really talked about as much as it should be when going to the doctor. SIBO is basically when you have too many microorganisms living in your small intestine and sometimes the large intestine. SIBO often gets mislabeled as irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome or IBS is not a cause. It's just a label for a collection of symptoms when they don't know what to say otherwise to call it. But in reality, for a lot of people, SIBO is actually the cause of your bloating, of your gas, of your irregular bowel movements, and even for some people, your non-digestive symptoms as well. For me personally, I had a ton of brain fog back when I had SIBO. To break down the types real quick, hydrogen SIBO is a type of SIBO where you have too many bacteria in your small intestine that produce hydrogen gas. Looser stools tend to be a little bit more prevalent in people with this type of SIBO, but this is not the case for everyone. Intestinal methanogen overgrowth, also shortened to IMO. I'm going to refer to it as methane SIBO for the rest of this video just to make it a lot easier. So because it's a mouthful to say, that's when you have too many methane producing microorganisms either in your small and or large intestine. Symptoms can be similar to hydrogen SIBO, but typically bloating and constipation or methane SIBO tend to be way more prevalent. And unfortunately, methane SIBO also seems to be more difficult to treat than hydrogen SIBO. There is a third type of SIBO called hydrogen sulfide SIBO but because this type of SIBO was not investigated in this research article that we're going to talk about, I'm not going to mention it anymore for the rest of this video. Moving on to current treatments. What are we doing right now to treat SIBO? There's basically five ways in research studies that have shown to be able to treat SIBO to very varying degrees depending on what you do. First one is antibiotics. The other methods for treating SIBO include herbal antimicrobials, the elemental diet, and then number five is probiotics. Despite having all of these treatment options, there's not much data on exactly what happens when we go about combining some of these treatments and even adding other additional supplements as well, such as prebiotics and glutamine. Will it be more effective, less effective, or really make no difference? And speaking of effective SIBO treatments, after consulting hundreds of clients with SIBO, I put together a SIBO elimination guide, which includes every protocol and trick that I found to be most helpful in eliminating SIBO. It's combined with ongoing support in a private Facebook group and both of these things are now included in an affordable monthly membership. To learn more, go to SIBOshortcutinfo.com. And now back to the rest of the video. All right, now let's look at this study. As I mentioned, this 2024 study by Nutrients Journal was literally just released earlier this month. So this is brand new. It's titled, Do Herbal Supplements and Probiotics Complement Antibiotics and Diet in the Management of SIBO? The hypothesis of the present study, this is basically what the study is trying to find out is that the combined use of antibiotics together with herbal supplements with antibiotic properties, probiotics, glutamine, prebiotic fiber, and a low FODMAP diet could provide better results for the management of SIBO than the standard treatment consisting of just antibiotics and a low FODMAP diet alone. This randomized controlled trial included 179 patients total. 56 had hydrogen SIBO and 123 had methane SIBO. Starting with hydrogen SIBO, of the 56 hydrogen SIBO, SIBO patients, 24 were in the control group. So on days one through 10, they took 400 milligrams of rifaximin, AKA Zyfaxin, three times daily for 10 days and did 30 days of a low FODMAP diet. Pretty straightforward. 32 hydrogen SIBO patients were in this intervention group. So they did the same treatment with rifaximin and low FODMAP, but then on days 11 through 30, so for 20 days after doing the antibiotic treatment, they took two supplements. One was this product called Oleocaps 2, which includes peppermint, 
cinnamon, lemon, and oregano. This was used one capsule three times daily, and this was also taken with berberine, 730 milligrams three times daily. And then these patients also took a warm wood supplement as well, 700 milligrams three times daily. After day 30, for the next six weeks, they also did these three things. The first is a probiotic called Probiotic Pro Inflam, which is a bifidobacterium longum ES1, 450 milligrams once daily, L-glutamine, five grams twice daily between meals, so on an empty stomach, and then PHGG, which is partially hydrolyzed guar gum. This is a type of prebiotic fiber, and they use five grams of this daily with one of the meals. So that was all for the hydrogen SIBO group. Now let's talk about what the methane patients took. Of the 123 methane SIBO patients, 35 were in the control group. So on days one through 10, they took 400 milligrams of rifaximin, aka zyfaxin, three times daily. They also used neomycin, 500 milligrams twice daily for 10 days. And then on days one through 30, they used a low FODMAP diet. 88 patients were in the intervention group for methane SIBO. So they did the same exact treatment I just said that was in the control group. But then on days one through 10, a Saccharomyces boulardii probiotic at 250 milligrams was also used once daily. And then on days 11 through 30 for 20 days, those oleo caps too were used again at the same dosage, one capsule three times daily. And then that wormwood supplement was also used on days 11 through 30, 700 milligrams three times daily. And then similar to the other intervention group as well, for the following six weeks, they also used that probiotic pro inflam bifidobacterium longum ES1, 450 milligrams once daily. And then they also used the L-glutamine five grams twice daily between meals. They did not use the partially hydrolyzed guar gum during this time period. And if you're looking to get supplements like these ones, create an account on my Fullscript online dispensary and get 20% off of everything in the store. This is where I order all of my supplements from. One reason I really like Fullscript is because they adhere to really strict supplement regulation standards. So you can trust that whatever products and brands you're ordering are reputable. And now let's talk about the results of this research study. For the results of the study, looking at this chart for hydrogen, the control group had a 15 parts per million decrease, whereas the intervention group only had a 6.3 parts per million decrease. So actually adding those extra supplements in this particular study ended up working not as well. Going over to the methane side, let me know if I'm absolutely crazy, but this says 11.7 parts per million decrease, but I get 9.6, whereas on this side for the intervention group, it was 14 parts per million reduction. So a somewhat decent reduction from the intervention group to the control group. This next chart here looks at two things. The first of the patients that were treated, how many of them went from having SIBO to not having SIBO. And if you look at the hydrogen and methane groups, there's not really much of a difference in terms of which group normalized gas levels better. If you go down to this bottom half of the chart though, the normalized clinical manifestations. This means, did the people feel better from before and after the treatment? For the hydrogen SIBO group, they really didn't feel any better. Whereas the methane group, the control group, 60% of people had symptom improvement that was reported, where 78.4% of people in the intervention group said that they felt better. That's about an 18% improvement, which is pretty significant. So that's it for the study. A few takeaways and thoughts that I had for hydrogen SIBO patients, according to the findings in this particular study, it doesn't seem like doing any of the interventions would be particularly helpful for these patients. However, for methane SIBO patients, it seems like 18% more people got symptomatic improvement. And then on lowering gases for the methane SIBO patients, the intervention group lowered patients on average 14 parts per million, whereas the control group was only 9.6. My one sentence takeaway on this data, incorporating these additional supplements into the methane SIBO treatment regimens may be beneficial for methane SIBO. I found really interesting was the follow-up breath test timing. In this study, the follow-up breath test was done 2.5 months after finishing treatment, which is a long time away to wait. That is all for this week's video. If you got value from it, please go ahead, like, and subscribe to my channel for more related content. I post a new full-length video every Monday in YouTube shorts daily throughout the week. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.